Dr. Julia Shaw has created a company called Spot that is confronting and addressing the uh, key issues around workplace harassment and discrimination. Now, what's really interesting about this scenario of Julia's Spot Startup is that you need a lot of research to get this right. It's incredibly important. And so Julia's background, in fact, is that she's a, a false memory expert and a criminal psychologist who is also a best-selling author. It's been published in 18 languages. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Julia Shaw to talk about her spot, the spot. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Nod. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I've got the screen. I'm going to stand in the middle. Um, I'm here to talk about why we need to change how we talk about workplace harassment. And I mean that twofold. One is how we actually talk about it in the sense of how we define harassment. I think Me Too and Time's Up have definitely given us context for the fact that a lot of people are experiencing workplace harassment, in particular the evidence suggesting that sexual harassment is a widespread issue in tech, in finance, in politics, in banking, in you name it. Um, and so in terms of one thing I'd like to, you to take out of this is to take out the idea that we should stop just talking about sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is a wonderful place to start. But harassment and discrimination, of course, come in all kinds of different forms. And when we're having an effective intersectional conversation about how we deal with inappropriate workplace behavior, we need to be more inclusive. It's not an issue about men versus women. I didn't create, and I very specifically went out to not create a tool that's for women. This is a tool for human beings who've been harassed or discriminated against, or who want to be allies because they've seen it happen to somebody else. Spot is a tool that helps you record and report workplace harassment. It's a chatbot, which is why I get to stand here, and I'm trying to really harness my background in criminal psychology and in understanding memory to do it. So the context is that we know this is a big problem, and specifically, we know that most of the time when people experience harassment or discrimination at work, they don't tell their boss. We also know that they don't even tell most of their colleagues. It's a quiet situation, and it really can make you feel like you want to hide under your desk rather than going out and telling the world about that. So we know almost no one reports harassment. The issue that harassment happens is, of course, a much bigger one, but that is such a multifaceted cultural systemic issue that one app, one chatbot can't possibly deal with that. And so we decided to focus on the issue of under-reporting. Because your organization can't do anything about harassment and discrimination that they don't know about. And right now, evidence strongly suggests that the reporting mechanisms are inefficient, that there are too many barriers between you and getting your information to people who can do something about it. And so, for example, Recently, there was a, a report that came out in the UK that said that one of the big barriers is that people fear retaliation. And one of the biggest recommendations that came out of this report was that specifically for sexual harassment, but also for other kinds, we should consider anonymous online reporting tools. And that's what we've built. But it's more than that, because what I'm really interested in is memory. And so as someone who spends who spend a long time uh, studying the problem of memory. I studied false memories. False memories of important emotional events, of crime, for example. So you experience or witness a crime. How do you remember that? And how do you know, if you're in a courtroom, that the memory that you're recalling, the details you're recalling, are accurate? And I'm the person who comes in when the question is, did this happen at all? I'm the person who comes in and tears into your memories. And I look for faults in the way it was recalled. And after 10 years of doing that, I disliked being the bad guy or bad woman who comes in and says, maybe this memory is all made up, and said, no, how do we prevent this from happening? Because of course, the reasonable response when you learn about how flexible your memory is, is how do I prevent that from happening? And I think chatbots are in a unique position to help us with this task. So there's this method called the cognitive interview which is best practices in memory interviewing. And it involves, actually, a scripted interview protocol. And this protocol has been around and studied for over 20 years. So we really know, in terms of how we educate the police, this is the best approach to asking people about these kinds of things. 
But individual police officers and individual memory scientists who know this aren't scalable. And one thing that bots are really good at, that humans are not as good at, is following a script. And so what we did is we created the first cognitive interview bot. And we applied it to this very pressing issue that people want to speak up about, which is workplace harassment and discrimination. So it's called Talk to Spot. The actual tool is called Spot. And it's available online for free right now. Um, we've been live since February. And we think that there should always be a version of this tool that's available for free. Uh, I was in a session earlier today when I talked about our approach of radical transparency and minimal storage. We, if you chat with our bot, we don't keep the chat. If you keep a PDF record after you've gone through our chat and you keep this and you've turned your memory into evidence that you can store, that's timestamped, that's evidence that I remembered this contemporaneously, even if I came forward months later, that's the best possible evidence you can have. It's timestamped, it's yours, but in terms of um, then going on to report it, you can then also choose to report it to your employer and you can stay anonymous. This is what it looks like. So Spot, oh, I'm in front of it. You can access it at talktospot.com. This is what it starts with. It's an anonymous chat. We don't store the chat, as I said. We also don't store the PDFs. Um, and that's because we're not in the business of monetizing data. We think that we should just charge companies to deal with the management side and the ability to respond to your reports and keep your anonymity intact. We charge your employer so that they can make your workplace better, but we think there should always be a free version because especially if you work for an employer that doesn't want this, you might need this. So this is what it looks like. If you feel something inappropriate has happened, you can get an education if you want. The bot can explain what harassment and discrimination are in a very high level way, but trying to break it down a little bit. Ultimately, however, it doesn't really matter if you know the exact legal definition. What matters is you know something inappropriate has happened and you'd really quite like it to stop. So that's why we talk about inappropriate workplace behavior, whatever that means to you. And the idea is that this just opens up a channel where you can immediately preserve that information and again, report it when you're ready and report it anonymously if you feel that's the way you need to go. So here's an example of what this looks like. So it starts off, the cognitive interview starts with free recall questions. Please tell me everything you can remember. It reminds you it has as much time as you need. It doesn't pretend to be a, a human at any point, and I think that's a benefit, and we'll get back into that. I think bots will be better at this than human beings. It essentially is a very practical approach, and these questions look so simple. These questions, words in these questions matter unbelievably. If you look at research on eyewitness memory, small changes in words dramatically change the type of information, the amount of information that's remembered. And so the way we phrase this is directly in line with this interview style. And it's also really easy if you've experienced an emotional situation to not structure your document. Let's say you're, let's say you're Comey and you decide after every meeting I'm going to sit in my car and record everything in an email and send it to myself. Great, great first step. But even there, how do you know what information might be relevant? And it's really easy to forget stuff. Stuff like, were there any witnesses? What actual day and time did this happen? Where did this happen? Stuff that's really easy if you're recording contemporaneously. Stuff that's really easy also to forget if you have to recall the situation weeks or months or maybe even years later. And so it's really prompting you and making it in a really easy format that you can recall all the important information. And you can take as long as you need. Um, you can also get witnesses to use it. So if someone else has seen it, you can ask them, can you make a spot report? And they can do the same thing and potentially also inform your employer. So this is a very quick version of it. Some people, so we've had about 1,500 people use it since February. Again, we don't know what's in the reports unless people send them to us directly. We have an option that you can send your report in for research, make it very clear that we then read your reports. Um, and from those, we've had about 170. And it's amazing how differently people record things. Some people, for the free recall, will spend hours. They will have a long, curated answer. And that's the freedom that you have when you're sitting at your computer and you're able to think it through. And you're not pressured by someone who's on a timeline, who needs to get to their next meeting, perhaps. Never mind the fact that sitting across from a human being and telling them about an important emotional experience, what happens? 
you feel like they're judging you. And they probably are, because they're trying to assess whether this is going to add to their workload and whether this is something that actually matters to them. They're wondering whether you're truthful or not. Um, and so there's questions around, uh, I think I just got a message. One minute. One minute, OK, fine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's questions around, should, can I trust this person with my information? And there's a powerlessness that goes into telling someone else about it, because then it's up to them to take that information and do something with it. So this tries to get around some of those barriers to reporting. And in terms of the other side, what your company then gets is this. If you've stayed anonymous, it says you've stayed anonymous. They get an, the ability to track the incoming reports, to respond to them, and to see the status of each report. The most exciting bit, definitely though, for companies, I think, is the ability that even if someone has stayed anonymous, to send back a follow-up chat. We've heard your response. We're giving you a voice. We, we appreciate that you've shared this with us. Can you tell us a couple more things? What you're doing and what your company is showing is that we've heard you, and we are immediately going to do something about it, even if that's a bit limited, because you've stayed anonymous. So you're saying you're taking this seriously, and you're, ability, and you're able to actually do something. Uh, again, in terms of communication, you can track internally what's going on, who's done what, who's touched this. And that approach to timestamping and having evidence when each thing happened applies equally to the company, where you're building a case saying, look, here are all the things we did to try and provide support to this individual who's come forward. Um, in terms of the industries that we're working with, uh, we're early days, so we only built our tool for teams. A couple of weeks ago we finished, and we're now talking to a number of different industries for our beta organizations. And the people we will be working with include a human rights organization, a, a, an organization in fintech, government, consulting, education, legal. We thought it would mostly be tech. We thought it would be people where Me Too started. We thought it would be Uber and those kinds of companies. <laughs> There's still widespread denial in certain industries that this is a real issue that we need to tackle. But on a more hopeful note, there is also insight in others. And so I think that this is going to become a new norm in how we talk about and report harassment and discrimination and the idea that we have to have better means for reporting. What we have right now is insufficient. Uh, the goal is that we celebrate people who come forward, that we don't see this as an opportunity to fire all the people who've been accused, because that's not an appropriate response to a systemic cultural problem. It's not that guy or that woman. No, it's a societal issue. All the people who've been around that person, especially in a cultural environment in a, in a company, have facilitated potentially that behavior to happen. So we're all part of the conversation, but what we need is to make sure that the voices who are directly affected are heard and able to speak. And so we should be celebrating people coming forward and having it as a discussion. That's my dream. So that's Talk to Spot. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, there's my information. And I hope when you're ready, you can all join the reporting revolution with me. Thank you. Okay.